So in this video we're looking at left to right subtraction and how to avoid borrowing using complements. And what I mean is here with 625 minus 468 I could think of this as 625 minus 500. Now when I solve this I get an easy answer which is 125. But what did I do? I took too much away. I only need to take 468 away and I took 500. So how is 468 connected to 500? Well, if I take 468 and I add 32, I get 500. So that means we took 32, too much, 32 more away from 625 than we needed to. We took 500 away. So this answer is too small. Oops, sorry about that. So since this answer is too small, we should add back, right, 32. We took too much away, we took 32 away, more than we had to, so add it back. And that gives us 157. And that's our correct answer. So the goal of this video is to look at some common complements. The complement here is, right, 32. 68 and 32, I rounded it up by 32 to get 500. It was able to use that to solve this problem. So what are some other common complements? Well, what about 56? What about 68? What about 51? What about 22? What about 78? Right? Common, common numbers you might have to use to find complements. The question is, what do I have to add to 56 to get 100? Because probably you'll be rounding this up to the hundreds place or some other tens place. Here with these numbers, right? They're all below 100, so if you were to find the complement, you would round them up to 100. So how do I do that? Well, I think, what do I have to add to 50, right, to get to get up to, to 90? Because I know I have some, some small amount here, so it's going to be 50 and 40, and then that gets me to 96 plus another 4. So to find the complement of 56, I would add 44. What about the complement of 68? Well, here I would add 60 plus 30 to get 98, and then two more to get 100. What about 51? Well, if I added 40, right, I'm going to get up to at least 90. That would give me 51 plus 40 is 91, plus 9 more gives me 100. 22, well, what about... I, I, the first glance, you might want to add 80-something, but that's too large, right, because we have 20 and 2. So add 70 to get 92, right? 22 plus 70 is 92, and then add 8 more to get 100. Here, at 78, what do we add? Well, add 20 to 78 to get 98, and then add 2 more to get 100. And again, let's, let's just zoom in on one of these. Let's try this one. Why is this useful? Well, what if I had a problem like 666 minus... 578. You know what? I'm sorry. Let's do 378. Okay. Well, how does this help us? Well, instead of solving this problem and, and trying to borrow, I can think of this as 666 minus 400. And that gives me 266. Now, the question is, what did I do? Well, 378 is what I needed to take away, but I took too much away. So how much more do I have to add back to get the correct difference? That's where our complement comes in. Here we have 378. So focus on the 78. How much more do I have to add to 78 to get 400? Well, with a complement, you know that. 78, right, to get to 100, I have to add at least 20, and then two more to get 100. So 378 plus 22 is 400. That's our complement right there. This makes the 100 up that we... That, that, com that connects 400 and 378. So that means what? Well, with 266, we took 400 away. It was too much. So we add back 22. That's the complement. And it gives us 288, the correct answer. Now, again, this might seem like a really long, drawn-out process, but the, the goal is to give you great number sense, to say, oh, if you want to take the difference of these two numbers, just subtract 400, get 266, and then say, oh, well, I took too much away. I took 22 more away than I had to, and add that back to get 288. 
And having this skill, finding the complement of each of these numbers or other numbers like it, will allow you to do this, to take more than you have to away and then add back the amount, right, the extra that you took away to get the right answer. So I hope this, I hope this encouraged you a little bit to try alternate strategies when subtracting.